Special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Rusberg for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare204 here bringing you another Minecraft World War II aircraft tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to build a pretty cool concept aircraft called the Volti XB-68 Tornado. The XB-68 Tornado was a proposed American high-altitude interceptor aircraft. It was based on the experimental XP-54 Swooskus and powered by the Wright R-2160 Tornado, 42-cylinder radial engine driving a set of contra-rotating propellers in a twin-boom pusher configuration. When the engine was cancelled on November 22, 1941, the XP-68 was also cancelled. This aircraft's a pretty cool design and really kind of seems a little bit ahead of its time for um, the time it was actually, I guess, put out in the early 1940s. Um, it's a cool aircraft and, you know, it's, it's, it's very unique. It's one of those twin-boom ones. Um, I guess you can really kind of compare this to the P-38 Lightning, which ended up kind of, I guess, taking the similar role or a similar type design compared to the XP-68 Tornado here. Uh, but a really cool aircraft. Um, kind of uh, sad we didn't get to actually, you know, see it in full, you know, production or anything like that, as um, it is really cool. And these pusher aircraft, they definitely have a kind of, uh, I guess, special place in my heart, I guess. I don't know. Um, but it's a cool aircraft and uh, should be a fun one to add to any of your kind of alternative World War II scenarios if you're just looking for some type, type of cool aircraft. Uh, none of these aircraft were ever produced, so obviously the actual versions were subject to change. This aircraft here is placed, er, designed completely off of blueprints and what could have been um, the XP-68 Tornado. But uh, overall, really cool design and uh, should make a cool addition to your World War II worlds. Before we go ahead and jump into taking a look at this build, I do want to go ahead and give a special thanks to Patreon support Derek Frost Whisper for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more you already do, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions where you can go and put a small amount to the channel every month and in doing so earn a view or request you're choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel. It's really greatly appreciated, so definitely feel free to check that out. Again, link for that will always be in my video descriptions. And with that, let's go ahead and dive in here to the Volti XB-68 Tornado overview. So, going ahead and taking a look at it, we obviously have it in a solid green color scheme, uh, pretty standard for those early American fighters. Um, we have the mounted machine guns up in top or in the front here. Uh, looking at uh, kind of specifications for it, looks like it housed about four or four uh, 50 caliber machine guns in the nose, so pretty good kind of armament. Again, very similar to that of like the P-38 Lightning. We then have the cockpit, um, the kind of cabling or kind of radio um, uh, tenor line that runs to the back uh, right boom. Um, as I mentioned, this is a boom aircraft, so it does have two of these um, booms that kind of flow backwards like that from the uh, wings. Uh, the wings themselves are pretty cool, uh, kind of give me a Corsair type vibe with a slant that goes like this and then it kind of works its way outward. Uh, really cool wings. Uh, I really do like the Corsair wings and this one here just kind of incorporates uh, those wings as well which is really cool. And then we have the back uh, engine here, the uh, contra rotating uh, pusher um, kind of engines. Uh, really cool design there and obviously your vertical and horizontal stabilizer here on the back. So it's almost like a hybrid between a, a Corsair and a P-38 Lightning or something like that. Um, it's it's a cool aircraft, I really do like it. And in this tutorial, you also have the ability to, the, to do the in-flight and landed version. So again, we have the in-flight version here um, as well that will be covered in this tutorial. So you'll be able to kind of pick and choose um, which one you want to build. Anyways though, that's pretty much it for this uh, overview. With that, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving into our first layers here. We're going to be going ahead and starting with layers 1 and 2. Quick few things I want to mention here before we go ahead and jump into the tutorial. First thing is being that if you're completely new to my aircraft tutorials, the way I like to start these tutorials, I like to do half on camera, half off. What this means is I'm going to be building the entire center line of the aircraft on camera. And then I will be building the uh, entire right side. It'll be up to you guys to take the right side and copy it over to the left side. For the most part, this aircraft is completely symmetrical. I think the only difference there is going to be that radio kind of cable or communication cable that runs from the uh, cockpit to the uh, right boom. So that's the only difference, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail once we get to that um, section of the tutorial. In addition, if you do want to build the aircraft landed, you will be able to build that. We will just be building the aircraft as if it's the in-flight version and adding the landing gear on as a modification near the end of the video. So what that will mean for you guys, if you do want to build this landed, you do want to make sure that layer 2 here. So layer 2 is going to be this layer with the slab, the piston, the green terracotta, etc. You want to make sure that that sits three blocks total up from the ground level. You can see we have one, two, three. 
uh, blocks of space between the ground level and this block here. Very important, make sure that's correct if you want to put the landing gear on later. Obviously, if you're building this in flight, it doesn't really matter. You can just kind of build it however you want and you'll be good to go. Um, anyways, with that all out of the way, um, let's go ahead and get started here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to place down a row of green terracotta. So we have this row of four here, like this. Again, landed versions, you'll have a space of three between the ground level and this layer here. If you're in flight, you obviously don't have to worry about that. Going ahead and going toward the front here, if you're on Java, we're going to place down two upside down pistons. If you are not on Java, um, I would recommend instead of the pistons to go ahead and place down a green terracotta block and then a dark oak wood slab. Uh, we will be using a tool called the debug stick, which is only going to be available with commands on Java edition. So if you don't have access to those commands uh, and you don't have a debug stick, not on Java, you will not be able to place down the pistons and do the technique we're going to be doing later. So just again, keep that in mind there. Again, green terracotta block and a dark oak wood slab as an alternative. We're going to go ahead and place down one more slab forward and then a dark oak wood trap door to go ahead and make the front there. Going ahead and moving to the end of this row of four, on the opposite side, we're going to place down two pistons. Again, instead of these pistons here, I would probably place down a, a green terracotta block and then a dark oak with slab, or a dark oak with top slab, um, again, like we did there for the front. After those pistons, we're going to go ahead and then place down a dark oak with slab, a black concrete block, then one, two green terracotta blocks. We'll then place down, again, two upside down pistons. Again, alternative here to the piston, I would recommend probably a green terracotta block and then a dark oak with top slab. And then on the very end here, we're going to place down a polished blackstone top slab. With that all finished, we're going to go ahead and then go to the sides. We'll start by going ahead and going to the side of the pistons or these blocks here. We're going to place down two zombie heads. We're going to go ahead and then take our green stained glass panes. We're going to place down one, two, three, four on these center four green terracotta blocks, as well as two more zombie heads. Then one, two mossy cobblestone walls, two green stained glass panes, and then two zombie heads like this on the side of these two pistons here. Once you have that done, that's going to kind of complete the center there of the aircraft. Uh, one thing also that we are going to go ahead and do is on the bottom of this dark oak with top slab, we're going to place down a narrow top slab just kind of below it so you have that half slab space right between those slabs. Then we're going to place down a second slab back on the bottom of that black concrete block and then a dark oak with trap door like so leading to the back and that will kind of create a little air scoop there on the bottom of the aircraft. With that all done, we're going to go ahead and then work our way out to the sides. We'll start off by going ahead and going to our first mossy cobblestone walls, and we're going to go ahead and place down a two, space of two of blocks out to the side here. We'll then go ahead and grab ourselves dark oak with trap doors. We're going to place down a dark oak with trap door on the top side here, or the top of the side of the block like that. And then we're going to place down one trap door forward, and then we're going to go ahead and go three back. So one, two, three. We then want to go ahead and take our dark oak with top slabs. We're going to place down one, two, three, four top slabs and then two trap doors back we'll then go ahead and place down a top slab here on the second one there and then one two three four top slabs back and then again taking our dark oaked slabs one two and three or sorry dark oaked trap doors back we're gonna go ahead and place down one two here to the side and then we're gonna go forward one two three dark oaked top slabs we then want to place down a row of one two three four of dark oaked trap doors and then one two on the forward side like so once we have that all done, we'll go ahead and then take our uh, delete these blocks here. And looking at it from the top-down view, this is what you should have for layers one and two with those with um, that all complete. Um, as you can see, we kind of have the basis of our wings set up. We have the fuselage started, and we'll just can continue to expand upon that as we go through future layers. Again, though, that is going to conclude everything there is there for layer two. Make sure you take what we did on the right side here. Again, flip it over to the left side so both sides are completely symmetrical. And uh, with that all out of the way, we'll be going ahead and moving on to our next layer, layer number three. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number three. For layer three to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a green terracotta block that's going to sit on top of this dark oak trap door here in the front. And then we're just going to place down a zombie head on the very front here like so. Going back from this green terracotta block, we're going to go ahead and place down an additional row of blocks of green terracotta. Going back for a total of 15 blocks, so it's going to end around top of this last piston here. We'll then place down two more black concrete blocks so it sticks out past this polished blackstone slab by one and then a wither skeleton skull there on the very tip to go ahead and make our center line. Moving on to the sides, we're going to place down two green stained glass panes here, a mossy cobblestone wall, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine green terracotta, one, two mossy cobblestone walls, a green stained glass pane, a black stained glass pane, and then we're going to place down a dark oak sign on the side here of this uh, glass pane, or rather actually, sorry, it's going to be... We're going to leave that for right now. We're just going to leave the black stained glass pane for right now. Um, continued on, we're going to go ahead and take our dark oak top slabs. We're going to go ahead and go to this green terracotta block right here, which is going to be after going back from the mossy cobblestone wall, the fifth block back. So we have our top slab there. We then want to go ahead and place down a row of four of upside down um, pistons. 
Um, so it's gonna be one, two, three, four. Again, that's gonna be more of a Java technique to go ahead and have these in place. Um, unfortunately, there isn't a really good alternative. Um, the pistons here really help us with the sloping of our wing. Um, I would probably recommend maybe doing just top slabs all the way across here, or you could place down dark oak with upside down stairs. If I can go ahead and grab a stair here, for example, um, you can go ahead and place down upside down stairs, kind of like that, um, instead of the pistons. Um, but for us, again, since we're on Java, we will be going ahead and using our pistons here for this technique. We're going to go and then just place down three more top slabs going back from the last piston there, and then we can go and delete those blocks over the top of them. After we have that done, we're going to go ahead and place down a dark oak with slab like this here, coming off this this piston. And then we're gonna go then place down a row of three of pistons. You can also use, at this point in time, end portal frames are also a, an excellent al alternative because they do give you that height that we're gonna be using uh, with the pistons here. Um, so it does give you that little modified height in what we'll be um, basically you doing earlier or doing later with the pistons. So again, you can use end portal frames as an alternative. We're going to go ahead and take our dark oak slabs and we're going to go ahead and go back three more. Two, three, like that. Then for our uh, next row out to the side here, we're going to place down a daylight detector. Come off the side of the slab, make sure that the trap door does stay closed on the bottom there. And then we're going to take our dark oak slabs, we're going to go back a total of four. And then we're going to take our daylight detectors and place down two back. We're going to go ahead and place down two slabs or two trap doors here to the side. We're going to go forward one, two, three, daylight detectors. And then we'll grab a green carpet, and we're going to place down a green carpet right here. We're going to go then place down a daylight detector like this. Two dark oak slabs back, and then one, two, three pistons, and then one, two, three, and four green terracotta. And actually, we're going to go and do uh, one green terracotta, then a blue concrete block, and then two green terracotta after that. After that's all done, on the inside here of the... Um, boom, we're going to place a dark oak trapdoor on the side of this blue concrete block and then two trapdoors on the side of these two green concrete blocks. We'll then take our green stained glass panes, we're going to place down one, two, and then one, two, glass panes like so. Then taking our dark oak top slabs, we're going to place down one, two, and three, top slabs back. We'll then take our dark oak trapdoors, we're going to place down one, two. We're going to go and then skip a space and place down a green terracotta block and then a dark oak would upside down stair here and a second stair upside down right behind it. And that will kind of get your booms set up a little bit and um, all that fun stuff. After we have that done, we then want to go ahead and go to our wings and continue to work on these um, going out to the sides here. So we're going to take our daylight detectors, we're going to place down one, two, three, and then we're going to take dark oak trap doors and we're going to place down two right here. We'll then take our dark oak slabs, we're going to place down a slab here and then we're going to go three Daylight detectors back, just like that. Then after we have that done, we're gonna place down two dark oak slabs, and again two daylight detectors back like so. Uh, we then want to go ahead and place down a row of three of dark oak slabs, and then a, another daylight detector like this on the end here. After that's all done, uh, we want to go ahead and then place down a row of three of dark oak top slabs across, uh, just like that. We're gonna go then place down a second row of three, and one two. And then a dark oakwood trapdoor like that right there in that corner space. And once we have that all finished there, that is going to basically wrap up everything we have here for um, this layer. Real quickly, if you are a Java player, we're going to go and type in the command slash give at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick. So this command here, and you'll get this debug you'll get this uh, glowing stick like so. What we're going to do is we're going to go, ahead and go to the pistons here on the bottom. We're going to go and left click them until we get selected the extended false prompt pop up. We'll then right click and get rid of that wood portion and we'll do this for all the pistons. We'll also go ahead and uh, do it for the pistons here on the booms. And that is all we're going to do for right now. We will not touch these pistons yet because if we do update the block space around a piston, so for example if I break the slab, you can see the pistons do revert back to their normal state. So just make sure that if you do uh, use the debug stick, whatever, you be careful not to mess with the blocks around them because they will cause those blocks to revert back. Uh, but anyways, we're going to leave those for right now because we will be messing with those a little bit later. So again, for the time being, we're going to leave those as is. Uh, the one thing I'm also going to go ahead and include this in this layer is going to be the props. So I'm going to go ahead and real quick grab our materials and we'll go ahead and build the props on the aircraft. All right, guys, so when it comes to building the props here, it's pretty straightforward and simple to do. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start off by building off this glass pane. One, two, three blocks over here to the left side. We're going to go ahead and then, uh, delete the first two blocks. We're going to place down one and two 
Wither Skeleton Skulls come off that block there, and then a Dark Oak with Sign, so it's going to look like that there. The uh, other, or then go ahead and go on top of this Black Stained Glass Painter to place down a Polished Black Stone Wall that goes up. One more that goes up at an angle, a Wither Skeleton Skull, and then a Wither Skeleton Skull come off that Skull, we'll delete that first one. And we're going to go ahead and do the same thing going down. So again, basically just the same thing, like this going down this way. Now for the uh, next block, this block here, we're going to go ahead and repeat the same thing for Wither Skeleton Skull. So one, two, three, uh, and four uh, blue concrete out to the side. We'll delete those first three, and then we're going to place down three Wither Skeleton Skulls like so. Same thing will be done here for our polished black stone walls. Again, just kind of going up like this side, and same thing going down this way. So just like this and you pretty much have the propellers done. Really simple stuff. Again, uh, just kind of to throw it out there as well. Uh, basically, the propellers can be flipped as well. It doesn't really matter too much, um, you know, either way. Uh, but that right there is just kind of what I did. So you can flip it the other way. It really doesn't matter as long as you have that design like that in front of you, you're pretty much good to go. Anyways, though, that is going to conclude everything we have there for uh, layer number three and with that we'll be going ahead and moving on up to layer number four moving on to our next layer We have layer number four for layer four to go ahead and get started with here We're gonna place down a polished blackstone slab on top of that second green terracotta block And then we're going to place down one chain going forward in addition from the previous layer I want to go ahead and add that on the side of this green terracotta block We are going to place down a dark oak with sign on both so both sides there So let's make sure that gets added on we'll then place down two pistons um, You can use pol a polished blackstone slab and then a black concrete block as an alternative um, the end pearl, I would not recommend end pearl frames just because we want to have kind of a darker color here for the front nose, um, like on the top here. Um, unless you want to disregard the black tip kind of nose, then you can go ahead and use the end pearl frames. But again, that's an alternative for you. You have the pistons or a polished blackstone slab and then a um, black concrete block or um, maybe even just a polished blackstone stair there. So whatever you think looks best, um, you can go ahead and use that to modify. After those two blocks, we're going to go ahead and place down two black concrete blocks. We'll then go ahead and place down a row of um, green terracotta that's going to go back a total of nine blocks. We're going to go ahead and place down our piston. This can be replaced with a group um, and portal frame and then a polished blackstone slab on top of that first black concrete block like so. Um, on the sides of this block here, we're going to go ahead and place down a um, zombie head. We'll then place down two green stained glass panes forward, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mossy cobblestone walls, two polished black stone walls, two wither skeleton skulls, and then a chain coming off this wither skeleton skull like that. We'll then take our debug stick and we can go ahead and right click the pistons here to go ahead and get rid of that wood portion, uh, just like that, and we have kind of our fuselage done. For our wing section, we're going to go ahead and take our green carpet, we're going to place down a row of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight green carpet across the top here. We can then take our debug stick and right click these pistons like so to go ahead and get rid of that wood portion and you can see we really have a nice slope there for the wings. Now after we have that all done moving ahead to our kind of wing tips here uh, we're going to go and grab our green carpet and on this 3x3 three three square here we're going to place down basically three rows of three of green carpet on the right side. The left side, however, we are going to go ahead and place down a row of three on the leading edge. Then we're going to place down a blue con or blue carpet in the white or in the center, and then a white carpet to both sides, and then a row of green carpet. This here is just to make the National Star insignia that's located on all American aircraft um, to kind of help identify it, um, and that is going to be present on the left wing and left wing only. Um, with that all done, we're going to then go back over to uh, the right side here. We're going to place down two daylight detectors like so, then two dark liquid slabs on the leading edge two uh, daily detectors on the trailing edge, a end rod going forward, and then the chain like that coming off of it. And basically that will be translated over to both sides and you'll have your wings complete. Moving ahead to our boom, uh, we're going to take our green carpet and we're going to place down a row of one and two of green carpet. We'll then take our dark oak with trap doors and we're going to place down one and two trap doors like so. And then also a trap door right here. We'll then take our daylight detectors, place down one, two, three. And then we're going to place down a dark oak wood uh, slab, which we can grab from right here. And we're going to place down a slab like so. And then one, two, three, four green terracotta blocks. Going across between our uh, fourth green terracotta block, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of dark oak wood trap doors like so. This right here is going to be a total of nine across. Then we're going to place down a row of nine of our daylight detectors. Uh, make sure that those trap doors do remain closed. And then we're going to then place down a row of nine of dark oakwood slabs. That will go all the way across and connect both our sides together with our horizontal stabilizers. 
Um, with that all out of the way, um, we also have that little uh, radio antenna or um, line that we do want to go ahead and talk about, and that is going to be real simply done by placing down a dark oak fence post on this green terracotta block on the right side, and again, the right side only. Um, in addition, I do want to go ahead and add on to the blue concrete block here. We do want to go ahead and place down a uh, button on the center there of that star, or the center of that blue concrete block again for like the little star that would uh, be in a circle on the sides of the uh, booms. Um, anyways though, that right there is pretty much it. Just trying to make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, actually, one quick thing also will be the addition of buttons on the side here. We'll place down a dark oak button here, and then three virtual buttons like that, the tail number for the aircraft. Um, anyways though, that right there is going to conclude everything we have for layer number four, and with that we'll be going ahead and moving on to our next layer, which will be layer number five. Alright, moving into layer five, we'll go ahead and start with going to the front here. After those black concrete blocks, we're going to place down another brick stair, a black stained glass full block, and then one, two, three green terracotta blocks back. We're going to go then place down a piston, then a dark oak slab, and then a daylight detector. The piston can be swapped out for a dark oak stair with the back toward the green terracotta. On the sides here, we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull next to the um, narrow brick stair, as well as a black stained glass pane, and then three green stained glass blocks back, and a zombie head on the side of the piston. We can take our debug stick here, right click the piston, and go ahead and get rid of that wood portion. And also, in addition, you can actually extend the glass pane um, toward the wither skeleton skull if you do have a debug stick. You can do this by simply pressing F3. Looking at that second paragraph, that fourth line should say we're facing toward the self. Um, for you, it might be different, so just make sure you look at that direction. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go to our glass pane, and we want to extend it that way. And for us, that's going to be self. So we're going to left-click the glass pane until we get selected self false. We'll right-click it, and it'll actually extend that toward our um, zombie head, and just kind of helps make this um, flow a little bit better here in the cockpit area. Um, after that's done, we'll go ahead and then move back to our tail in the aircraft. We're going to place down one, two, three green terracotta blocks. They're going to go on top of these um, last four here. And then a dark oak button on the side of this green terracotta block like that. One thing we're also going to go ahead and talk about this in this layer is going to be this right side. We're going to go ahead and get this um, kind of radio cable or whatever established and finished. Now what we're going to do for this is we want to go ahead and begin with by going ahead and grabbing ourselves some barrier blocks. These can be attained by typing the command slash give at P. And we can just go and type in barrier. It should give you the option here to autofill by pressing tab. It will autofill for you, but this is a command fully. Minecraft colon barrier block um, or barrier. And you can go ahead and press enter and you'll get this um, barrier block here. Um, I do know that they are available on um, the other versions such as um, the uh, bedrock version. Um, they are also known as a structure block. Basically any invisible block that you can attach um, buttons to is gonna pretty much work for this application. What we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and go to the top of this fence post. We're going to build one block over and then a barrier block forward. We'll then delete these two blocks. Coming off this barrier block, we're going to place down a second one like so. And then we're going to place down two stone buttons on the side. We're going to go ahead and then go um, kind of inward at an angle, place down another two. And then again, kind of inward, forward at an angle. Another two barrier blocks. Again, kind of forward here at an angle. And then uh, two barrier blocks again and our two stone buttons. And this is going to kind of bring us here to our glass pane situation here. Now, you can either place down a zombie head if you don't have access to a debug stick. However, since we do have access to a debug stick, we're going to place down a trip bar hook on the side of this barrier block. We'll then take our debug stick, left click it until we get selected facing. We'll then right click it and rotate this around until it comes off the side of that glass pane there. Then on this back section here, uh, you can either place down a lever on the... Um, or actually, rather, instead of that, you can either place down a zombie head, kind of angled like so for the line to connect to, or uh, for my Java players, we'll place down a block here to the side of the fence, uh, the side of the top of the fence post, a lever like so. We'll left click it like this with our debug stick until we get selected um, face, and we'll right click this to floor, and then we'll go ahead and change the facing and rotate this and point this forward. Um, so basically, it looks something just like that, and that right there is pretty much what you want for that cable. Again, this is going to be only on the right side and the right side only. And um, yeah, that right there is going to complete layer 5. With that, we'll go ahead and move into our last final layers for the in-flight version. So for our final layer here, we just have layer number 6. To go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a uh, daylight detector on top of this slab here, and then a dark oak trapdoor directly behind it, and make sure that trapdoor is closed. For the vertical stabilizers, we'll simply, we're going to place down a mossy cobblestone wall, then a green terracotta block and then a green stingless pane here on the ends. We'll place down a dark oak button on both sides of this green terracotta block and again same thing will be done just over here to this side like so. And also in addition on the inside here we do want to place down a dark oak button on this green terracotta block as well on the inside there are those uh, verts. 
With that all complete though, that is going to wrap up everything that we have there for the um, layer number six, our final layer. And with that, that is going to complete our tutorial here for the in-flight version of the XP-68. At this point in time, we will be going ahead and moving on to covering the landing gear configuration. So if you do want to have this landed, we will be covering that next here in the tutorial. If you are just here for the in-flight version, you're pretty much good to go. Enjoy the build. Um, but with that, let's go ahead and move into our landed version. All right, guys, so going ahead and getting started here for our landing gear, we're going to go ahead and start with our front wheels. What we're going to do first is we're going to go to these two pistons here. We're going to go ahead and right click them like so for our debug stick to go ahead and uh, re-trigger the wood. We'll then delete these um, two green terracotta blocks right behind them. We're going to place an iron trap door here, a stone brick wall here, then a birchwood fence post, an end rod, and then a block of coal on the bottom of that fence post. Or, sorry, on the bottom of the end rod. We'll then take our uh, banners. So this is a banner design you can do. It's a light gray banner with a black border and a black horizontal line for the center. I'm not gonna cover how to make this banner in pretty good detail since it's pretty straightforward and simple to do. And this will just go on both sides of this block of coal. With that finished, we then wanna go ahead and take our debug stick and we're gonna go ahead and just right click those pistons like so. We'll then place down two blocks. They're gonna be on the sides here of this um, this kind of set aside here at an angle, and we're going to place down levers on the side of those blocks. This here is going to be mainly a Java feature because we'll take our debug stick, we'll right click the, or sorry, left click the lever until we get selected facing. We'll rotate these around until they connect up to that fence post and then also to that end rod. We'll then use our debug stick here in the top one. We're going to go ahead and power it to true so that it faces downwards like so and connects up like that for our front wheel. That right there again is it for the front wheel and we'll go ahead and then move on to the back ones. Moving into our next segment, we're going to be going ahead and working on our rear landing gear. What we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and go to this row of uh, five of dark oak wood top slabs. We're going to go to the middle block, we're going to break that slab and place down a stone brick ball in its place. We'll then go down for birchwood fence post, then an end rod, and after we get down from that end rod, we're going to go and go toward the inside here for a polished black stone wall. One wall forward from that, two with their skeleton skulls on top of those two blocks, or two walls. And we're also going to go and grab a skeleton skull and we're going to place it on the side here. So just like that. After that's done, we're also going to take a green banner and we're going to place it on the side here of this fence post facing forward. On the back side here, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing we did previously with the front. It's going to be with our levers here. Again, going to be a Java only feature. And again, we'll just kind of do the same technique that we did for the front there. And again, this top one will have face downwards connect up to that there. And once we have that all done there, that's going to basically complete that landing gear. You're going to take that same design, copy it over to the other side, and you'll have your landing gear complete for the rear. And with that, that's going to wrap up my tutorial here for the uh, XP Tornado, um, basically high altitude interceptor. Well, if you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put to good use, if you do not use this build, I do ask you guys to give me proper credit for it. This will be linked from the side of the build, tweak my channel, or this video if this does bring social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, you're free to refer projects you guys are working on. Again, a big special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. As always, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions. With that all out of the way, though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been your 204, and I'll see you guys next time.